Hello everyone, in this video we are going to take a look how to set up CAN bus on Manta E3EZ Big 3 Touch board. I'm gonna set it up to use Hermit Crab, but you can also set it up as SB2209 or there's a newer version SB2040. My CM4 model does not have EMC and I will run main sale OS directly from SD card, so I will need SD card reader. We will need CAN bus wire later to verify that we have connection between Hermit Crab and the motherboard itself. Let's put it aside. And the next piece we'll need USB-C cable. This is supposed to be a USB-C data cable. Some of the USB-C cables you can find around may be only power. So make sure that you can transfer data with that cable. This cable we'll need in order to flash initial firmware over our Hermit Crab board. Let's put it aside. And we will also need two power sources. One to power Manta board. This one has micro USB and another one USB-C in order to power our Hermit Crab. One very important step to mention is that your board have two pins that you must bridge, otherwise it will not work. This is named 120R bridging CAN bus to 120 ohm resistor on the board. So both of the devices you have should have those set. In some cases on the motherboard you will not find this bridge. On the Manta board it is located right nearby the CAN connectors. I've seen some issues where compute model were not able to communicate with board properly because it wasn't inserted all the way. So I recommend you to put bolts in the mounting holes for your compute model. That way you know it's actually properly seated. Wi-Fi antenna also is a very important thing that you have to have on your board installed. Otherwise it's not going to be able to connect. It is important for both CB1 model and compute model 4. Next step I'm going to set up a little bridge right here, that way our board could be powered via micro USB. Same thing you can find on SB2209. My Hermit Crab does not have such switch and it directly works via USB-C. So I don't need to do anything here. So before we start, I would like to recommend you a document that was put together by Frederick. Frederick has described how to set up Manta M8P with Big 3 Touch EBB2209. So we're going to closely following this, but some of the settings are gonna be different. I will share the link to this document into the description. Let's start with writing main sale OS over our SD card. I have docking station right there, so I will plug in my SD card into the docking station. And I'm going to use Raspberry Pi Imager. What is good with Raspberry Pi Imager that you can find main sale OS into the repository of Raspberry Pi. I'm going to pick the device. I have a compute model for. Next, we're going to choose the OS. It is located in other specific purpose OS, 3D printing, and you will be able to find main sale OS right here. At this point, only 64-bit version available because it's the latest one and up to date. So I will use that. And we are going to choose the storage, our connected SD card. So we click next and very important step, we need to edit settings. You set your Pi user, your Wi-Fi, and I'm going to use it under three, easy. So that way I can identify that device on my router whenever I need to do it. We click save and yes. And we want to erase the SD card. Let's wait till the Raspberry Pi imager is done. So main sale was written and verified by Raspberry Pi imager. Click continue and take our SD card out and put it into the our board. You have to use SOC card slot for that. Next, we are going to power our motherboard with micro USB cable. Again, make sure you have that bridge set it up right here, otherwise it will not be powered by this port. So the board is booted and now I have pulled IP address from my router. This is the IP address for our device. You obviously will have some clipper issues because we don't have printer config, but Right now, first step we want to do is go and update all the packages. Otherwise, we will have problems when we flash board with older version of Clipper. An update manager have pulled all the information for the updated packages we need. So we click update all components. And I understand the risk, start the update. So this is very important step. Take your time and update the main sale packages. 
you can see here notifications that some of our devices are undervolted. That's because we are powering our board from the USB. The CM4 model is not receiving enough voltage, but it's more than enough for us to finish the setup. Let's set up a basic printer config so we can move from there further. In order to do it, we're just going to go and search Manta GitHub repository. And over here, you will be able to find Clipper config. Let's copy that. And we are going to create a new file called printer.cfg. Go here and we paste whatever we just copied. And one of the important things, we need to include main sail OS file, CFG. It contains all the required macros in order for printer to work. At this point, I'm going to command everything and we are going to set up printer to be kinematics none and max acceleration values. Save and restart. And now we need to connect to our device via SSH terminal. Let's go and SSH to our Raspberry Pi. This is the IP address and the password is Raspberry. I set my default password, perfect. So in order to run both of those devices, we will need to install two softwares on our devices. You can go directly with Clipper, but I recommend to install Catapult, also known as CAN boot. That way your devices always be available via CAN bus and you will be able to update them directly from the CM4 model. We're just simply going to clone Catapult repository. Then we're going to navigate in catapult directory that just created. And now when we are in a catapult directory, we need to set up catapult firmware. Let's run make a new config. And here is our settings. Now we're going to click Q, Y, and make clean. This will make sure that our environment is clean and make to build in firmware. Catapult is finished building, the file located right here. The next step for us, we are going to go back and build Clipper firmware. Go Clipper, and we do the same, make menu config. Very important, this step is crucial, because if you will pick those values incorrectly for the CAN bus interface, your board will be able to determine itself, but not gonna be able to find other external devices. What is good that Manta config actually contains information what you have to use. So here we must pick those settings, PB12, PB13. Otherwise, as I said, you're not gonna be able to see other CAN bus devices. I had this problem in the past and I spent hours debugging this problem. So this is very important. Each board has own values. We also set speed to be 1 million. We click Q. Save configuration file and make clean. And we make the firmware again. So we built Catapult firmware and now we're building Clipper firmware. Firmware is finished building and we need to flash it over the board. You have two buttons right here, the boot button and the reset button. What you need to do, you need to push both buttons and then release reset button and then release boot button. That way board will go in DFU mode and we can flash it from the Raspberry Pi directly. So let's do it. Pushing both buttons, then releasing reset button, releasing boot button. It is super easy to determine if your motherboard into the DFU mode, you just type LS USB, and you can see right here, device is in DFU mode. Now we are going to flash catapult on this device first. So this is the command, you use your device identificator right here. Start, we need the password. And sometimes you can get this here, but we can see here that firmware uploading is done. 
no problems. So now we need to restart the device by pressing reset button. We check if the device in DFU mode. It shouldn't be. You can see the device in the CAN adapter. Let's put device in DFU mode again and flash clipper. Push both buttons, release reset button, release boot button. We check again our device in DFU mode. And now we're writing the clipper on it. So we build catapult, we build clipper, and we flash them into the board. You can see it's perfectly flashed over there, no problems. So next step will be to enable CAN bus. To enable CAN bus, we need to create an interface on our Raspberry Pi. I prefer to use Midnight Commander on my Linux machine, so let's get it installed. I find Midnight Commander editor much easier to work than MC. Midnight Commander installed and we can use Midnight Commander editor and it is very easy. This is a CAN bus interface we need to create. In our setting we have used a million speed because again we want to avoid micro steps issues. And very important, this value to be 1024, otherwise you might have issues connecting CAN bus devices. So we click quit, save, to make sure that CAN interface is working. Simple command, starts up the CAN interface and we can easily verify if it works by running. And right here, you're able to see CAN zero interfaces running. So now, if we have done everything correctly, our Raspberry Pi should be able to see motherboard as a CAN device. So for us to get it, we're running this command. This is just a catapult script that allows you to flash CAN devices, but you can also use it to list devices. Let's see. And here is our motherboard. I appeared as catapult node and you can see Clipper application is installed. If we have done everything correctly, we should be able to use that UID and connect to our motherboard via Clipper. Let's go into our printer config and find MCU section. Canvas UID and we're going to use our UID. We save and restart. Let's see if Clipper will be able to connect to other motherboard. Here you go. You got CAN bus working on the motherboard. So what we need to do next is to connect our SB2209 or in my case Hermit Crab via CAN bus to our motherboard. In order to do it, we need to flash Clipper and Catapult in there too. Let's connect back to our Raspberry Pi. Go to the Catapult and run make menu config. So here are the settings for our RP2040 for catapult. Click Q, save, and we run make clean and make. We're going to build the catapult for our hermit crab. The process is done. The next step, we're going to build the clipper. We go back to clipper and run the same, make menu config. I wish to spell it properly every time. Those are the settings for Hermit Crab. And I save, make clean, and make. So while it's making, I will show you where I have pulled those values. We have perfect documentation for Hermit Crab from Victor Tech, and here you can see setting for Catapult and for the Clipper. For your EBB2209, SB2040 or other board, you just use documentation and settings provided by the manufacturer. Let's go back and see if it was built. Perfect. So when we finished building a catapult and clipper firmware for our hermit crab, we need to connect it into the DFU mode to our motherboard. So holding the button and connecting it. Perfect. Now you can verify in your Raspberry Pi if it is in the boot mode. LS USB. You see it's in a boot mode. We going back to catapult 
And this is the command we're going to use in order to flash catapult over our device. Put the password. Perfect. It's rebooted. We're unplugging our device. We need to connect to our Hermit Crab via CAN bus. I'm going to unplug everything. And let's connect our CAN cable. My Hermit Crab. CAN slot on the motherboard. We're powering on the motherboard. And with separate power adapter, we're powering the Hermit Crab via USB-C. So now Hermit Crab connected to our motherboard via CAN bus with yellow and green cable. And both boards powered separately, one via USB-C and another one via micro USB. Let's connect to our Raspberry Pi again. And now we want to run a command and see devices that are listed on our canvas. Keep in mind that we only will be able to see Hermit Crab. And the main reason for that is we already have open connection with motherboard from our clipper. Whenever you have open connection, this device just simply disappears from the canvas. So what we can do if you wanted to see that device, you can simply comment our CAN bus connection. Let's save and restart. I like how main sale added opportunity to list devices. So here you can see that we have catapult device and a clipper device. This is our motherboard and this is our catapult hermit crab. And we can flash that device via CAN bus. That's the benefit of Catapult. So now we're able to see our Catapult device. Let's copy the UID, we will need it. And we can follow the instruction how we can update the firmware via Catapult. We go in Catapult, scripts, and we're going to run this command for our UID. Perfect, now our Hermit Crab is flashed with the Clipper. And we did it via CAN bus. And we can check how many devices on a CAN bus right now. Two of our devices, Hermit Crab and our motherboard. Let's create separate instance for our Hermit Crab into the main cell. So this is our MCU and Hermit Crab 2 CAN bus UID Save and restart And you can see both of the devices in CLIs and our clipper connection is working perfectly fine And this is pretty much it for this video I'm really happy that I finally made the video for this topic because I had a ton of questions about this setup and how to set up Canvas, what's the problems can be Hope I described it pretty well See you at the next one, let the force be with you Bye bye